The following is an exclusive presentation of Meet the Leaders, only on Optimum. We're your TV, phone, and internet company. Coming up on Meet the Leaders, Nassau County Comptroller George Maragos talks about fiscal matters of the county and what can be expected. Meet the Leaders starts right now. Hi, I'm Pat Halp and welcome to Meet the Leaders, the show getting you to the heart of local government right here, right now, with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. Controller Maragos, it's great to have you back. Pat, good morning. So nice if to we, be back. So if we want to know about the dollars and cents and where the money is going, you're the guy to speak to. So, so first, let me get your thoughts on a big issue that you're not directly involved in other than that you pay LIPA bills. Uh, but it certainly affects every resident of Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk County and part of Queens. And that's this idea that the governor has to privatize LIPA. Uh, you're, you come from the private sector. You're right. also the uh, county controller. So you know a lot about uh, debt. You know about what money costs. You know about uh, you know, the things that, that drive, uh, in this case, rates. Uh, give us your assessment of it. Privatization is an old concept, and it will not work. I had actually. It will not work. It will not now work. Now you're a Republican, and, and there's been a, a number of uh, local um, experts that mm -hmm. have looked at the, the financials and the debt that LIPA has, and it's just not feasible for to privatize it without having rates skyrocket. I had written uh, um, a couple of months ago a letter to the governor suggesting that rather than, than privatizing, we should de deregulate the market and allow competition to come in, mm -hmm. as we've done with uh, local cable. Right. Uh, and that will bring uh, rates down. Uh, that will uh, strengthen our infrastructure, uh, as well as insourcing and now the, uh, the, the maintenance of the, the plant that we have, the transmission mm -hmm. facility that we have, that now we have them outsourced to a British company, uh, National, National Grid, Grid. Or, and now we're going to a New Jersey company. So the next storm that comes along, Long Islanders are not going to be a priority again, unfortunately. Isn't it a misnomer to say that LIPA really runs the system? I mean, that you have it, again, using your private sector experience and, and perspective, it's really more of a holding company to handle debt it, it, it and, set, and, and to set rates. Absolutely. The LIPA has nothing to do with management. They don't, uh, they don't operate the system. Uh, they don't operate the system. Uh, they have no responsibility uh, for the, the system. Um, uh, maintenance, uh, the rates, uh, they're, they're a front in effect. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and of course, you know, that's a reflection of the weak management that we have had. Well, There's been no management. But what effect. about the debt? I mean, uh, you can't talk about LIPA without understanding just how big the debt is, the six or seven billion dollars of debt that they've incurred to pay offshore a nuclear power plant that never operated to invest in Right. Uh, to invest in power lines and other system improvements to Absolutely. sponsor the, the, the solar debt, programs, have, all those LIPA things. LIPA has about seven billion. Seven billion in debt. debt. Uh, the net worth of the facilities are about three to three and a half billion. So how can you sell that? Let's say you turn around and you sell it. And, I mean, I don't think the a private company is going to pay seven billion no, dollars. They, they could liquidate the debt. The, the, the state taxpayers would have to absorb mm -hmm. the, the the difference, and I'm not sure that uh, up the upstate New Yorkers would want to subsidize Long Islanders. Or for that matter, uh, folks that live in the city of New York who are also paying uh, very uh, high absolutely. rates. Absolutely. So, so it's going to be very difficult. So, let, so, you, so you talk about introducing market forces. Yes. Um, how, how could something like that work under the structure that we have today? Well, you know, simply allow um, uh, other companies that uh, have expertise mm -hmm. uh, in, in providing uh, ut electric utility services to come in with the, the single proviso that they put their, their transmission plants underground. So that will strengthen uh, our, our distribution facility, prevent recurrence of what we saw happen with uh, Hurricane uh, Sandy. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of companies that would be happy to come in and compete with uh, But wouldn't that cost LIPA? billions of dollars uh, to take transmission lines and put them underground. I mean, we're basically, we have a system that's above ground. Right. Um, so we're very vulnerable to wind when trees go down, the right. lines go exactly. down. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen if they're underground. But what if they were underground on the South Shore? They'd be flooded. 
Well, you know, the, the, I'm not sure they would be flooded because natural gas, we have uh, pipelines right. going to the South Shore, and they weren't affected. Uh, the same thing, if you recall, the, the parallel is when Verizon uh, came in with uh, and installed uh, fiber optic mm -hmm. uh, cables to compete with, uh, unfortunately, cable vision. Well, that's the in, world in, we live in. in it's in, called in the, competition. In case. Uh, but it's, it's a long-term uh, yeah. process. Uh, it took uh, a few years, uh, but we have choice. Mm -hmm. And, and rates have come down, and uh, hopefully the, our residents are getting better service. Okay. I, I anticipate that will happen with LIPA as well if we deregulate the market and allow competition. Okay, let's shift gears and talk about Sandy Relief. Mm -hmm. um, they originally uh, proposed, uh, you, you've done an assessment of what the impact of Sandy has been on Nassau County. What is it? Well, uh, we estimated that the uh, economic activity loss close to a billion dollars. A, a How do you measure dollars. that? Well, we, we look at the, the total uh, gross domestic product mm -hmm. uh, that the NASA County produces, and we took that slice, uh, two-week slice, where commerce almost came to, to a halt. Right. Uh, gas stations were closed, uh, the malls were, were closed, uh, and, and then we adjusted for kind of the, the, the slow recovery during that two period, mm -hmm. and we arrived at uh, that uh, uh, one billion. So that's just in two weeks we lost a billion dollars uh, in economic activity. And the corresponding uh, then sales tax loss right. we estimated at about uh, 30 million dollars. Now what we've seen since then is, is a very robust recovery. Uh, we've mm -hmm. come back strongly. Uh, FEMA funds have come, uh, have come into the county to help people rebuild. Insurance money has come in, and, and we think we've been, we probably recovered 80% of that. And we hope to recover and maybe uh, get ahead in the first quarter of, the, of this year. But those dollars, those dollars from FEMA and all are really just coming in in the last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, it's taken a, lo a lot longer than people had no, anticipated no, to actually get the dollars. A lot, a lot of money came in very no. quickly. FEMA was on the ground okay. uh, very rapidly, uh, even the, the, the first week. Uh, going around uh, inspecting homes right. and and writing checks on the spot to help people recover. So we're so very thankful. So you feel pretty optimistic that as people move from you know, kind of the stabilization to the recovery and the rebuild, uh, that uh, we're, you know, that from an economic standpoint, the region will rebound. Oh, ab absolutely. Especially now that the 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 region uh, mm -hmm. we're we're not going to be getting all forty billion dollars that Governor Cuomo has asked. But we're getting 75 percent, close to 26 mm -hmm. billion. I understand. Uh, NASA County had requested; we had requested 6.7 billion dollars. So if we get three quarters of that, right. that will mean four to four and a half billion dollars in new investment is going to come into NASA County, and that's certainly going to be a great economic boost. Okay, we're going to take a short break. We come back. I want to talk to you about. Uh, the finances in Nassau County. You just gave a report card on how 2012 worked out. Uh, so we'll be discussing that. So we'll have more with Controller George Maragos right after the break. Stay tuned. The Terry Farrell Firefighters Fund doesn't have a telethon. It's not about being in the spotlight. It's about giving support to the firefighters who serve our community. The fund was established in memory of Terry Farrell, a decorated member of Rescue 4 FDNY, who perished on 9-11. The fund ensures that firefighters and first responders have the resources they need to protect the public. And the fund assists families of firefighters faced with medical emergencies. Won't you help? Please visit terryfund.org. Did you uh, get a call from the coach about those kids who were caught drinking? Not our guys. They know better. Yeah. They know better. Heads up, sport. Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% tried by the eighth grade. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Yes, ready, ready. Go ahead. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet.
Welcome back to MTL here with George Maragos, Nassau County Controller. Uh, Controller Maragos, you just issued a report on the state of the county's finances. What are your findings? Well, it was a statement. It wasn't a formal report, just an er early indication uh, that uh, we've been able to overcome a projected deficit that we had uh, indicated mm -hmm. back in July of about $45 million, uh, to now showing a, a small surplus. Um, we're keeping close watch on, on the books of the county and, and the expenses. Uh, the county executive had taken some significant steps to reduce expenses after mm -hmm. our warning uh, in, in July, and, and now we're, we're projecting you know, a, a small surplus. What were some of the steps that they took to, to close the gap? Well, they continued to reduce costs. Uh, they um, uh, delayed uh, certain, uh, certain contracts. Uh, they expedited completion of some other capital projects uh, that came in under budget, mm -hmm. and as a result, that money it will be used to can only be used to pay down debt. Right. Uh, so those are all positive factors that uh, uh, seem to have had the effect of overcoming the earlier projected deficit. But the county did incur uh, tens of millions of dollars in expenses related to the hurricane to Hurricane Sandy, increased police protection, public works parks, damage to county facilities, and uh, just, you know, other, other expenses directly related to coordinating the emergency response for the, right. for the county. Mm -hmm. Well, th that is correct. How and, does that get factored and, into and something like that? It, it is factored in, because, you know, and, and we have to be very meticulous <clears throat> and, and keep accurate records of uh, where that money is spent, uh, for what reason, that it's directly related to uh, Sandy recovery. Mm -hmm. We're working very closely with FEMA to make sure that we follow their their rules to ensure that uh, we will be uh, reimbursed. Uh, we're having FEMA sign off on our worksheets. Uh, so it's very important, it's critical as a matter of fact, that we keep track, very uh, close track of those expenses to ensure that we are reimbursed and not have to take a hit on our budget. Well, that's really important. And, and as somebody who was involved in that, when I was county executive, you have to keep meticulous records yes. uh, for FEMA reimbursement. They are not going to give you uh, reimbursements for expenses that you can't document that were directly related uh, to uh, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, so you've looked carefully at their methodology and what's being done department by department. Ultimately, all of that goes through your office uh, to pay the bills mm -hmm. in anticipation yeah. of those uh, and, FEMA and we, funds. And we've sent people, our people out mm -hmm. to each of the departments, like uh, public works, right. to make sure that they understand what the rules are to help them uh, justify their, their, their claims that they are submitting, uh, and we're also working close with the budget office, so to avoid any surprises that down the road. You know, uh, people have learned those lessons the hard way, mm -hmm. because they'll go back to uh, hurricanes, the past Hurricane Gloria and elsewhere, and, and it's an emergency, you're authorizing um, you know, additional equipment, you're authorizing cleanup uh, to be done, but if it isn't done, if, if, you, if you don't document it properly, you're not going to get reimbursed for that. And you better make sure you've done it properly. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And you cannot go back and undo it. And undo it. And redo it. Right. Because if, once you submit to FEMA and they sign off, that, that's, you're, you're held to that. Now, some uh, governments have, uh, in anticipation of emergencies, set up procedures and contracts that they can utilize knowing uh, that if there is an emergency, if there is a disaster, they're able to use those contracts uh, to expedite uh, getting those services and the cleanup, the rescue, all of that. Uh, does Nassau County have a process like that? Oh, absolutely. And, and we've already been given certain funds on, on anticipation mm -hmm. uh, from, from FEMA. That, uh, and you have to basically justify you know, whatever advance they give you that you, you have preliminary emergency contracts in place. Right for that expenditure. What about uh, post Sandy? You mentioned before that you that you think that sales tax revenues will be robust as a result of of uh, all of the repairs and and the uh, the rebuilding that's going to be going on, you know, throughout the region. Any idea how much that could be? Well, we estimated that, you know, we we will see a, a, a shortfall in in sales tax this year. We will not fully recover. Mm -hmm of about 10 to $15 million. In and short how much is collected in county sales tax annually? Uh, about $1.1 billion. Okay, so that's... That, it's it's overall, 1%. It's 1%. Which is a significant yes. uh, amount, um, you know, in a, in a difficult budget year. But what about in 2013? Uh, but we, we see a pickup 
of mm -hmm. that amount or a little more in, in the first quarter of uh, 2013. I mean, we see things like tens of thousands of cars were destroyed. Yes. Uh, if you're in a low-lying area, you have to replace you know, the white goods, the washing machine, the refrigerator, the dryer. All of those things are, are big ticket items uh, that have sales tax associated with those, with those oh, purchases. Ab absolutely, and that's why we're seeing the very robust mm -hmm. recovery. Now, something, a, a program that the city had, which is you know, to put a kind of a, a, a task force together to go in and help people repair with electricians, right. plumbers. We had the same team here. It wasn't publicized as much, uh, but they were very helpful in helping a lot of people in the South Shore to recover. And to help them you know, literally get their homes habitable again, not completely rebuilt, but habitable so that they could stay there because there's such a shortage of, of housing in our area, especially temporary housing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you feel pretty good that 2013, assuming we don't have another catastrophe like a hurricane hitting, uh, it should be a very strong year for the Nassau uh, economy. Economically, I think it's going to be a good year. And what uh, about the course, there's always challenges. But what about the recovery, mm -hmm. the national recovery? Are you seeing, for example, uh, home sales improve in Nassau County, whereas uh, for the last five or six years, you know, we saw them uh, decline, the average price go down, uh, access to money and mortgages so it was difficult, interest rates were not as low as they are now. Is that beginning to, to have an impact here? It, it is. We're seeing home prices firm um, and, and increase uh, somewhat. Uh, we've gotten a, a, a mm -hmm. couple of major surprises, negative mm -hmm. surprises in, in the last week. Last week where we had our national GDP decline by 0.1%, nobody was expecting that because apparently the federal government is cutting right. back on their, uh, on their expense. And this morning we had uh, the unemployment rate kick up to from 7.7% to 7.9%. I think that's good news because you know, even though the, the unemployment went, went up, it means that more people now are seeing the economy improve and are entering uh, the workforce and looking for jobs. That's an interesting assessment because you're right. I hear from economists that say the unemployment rate is really not an accurate assessment of who's looking for work and how many people are out there because a lot of people give up because they feel that it's futile. Well, and now they're they're <clears throat> they're being encouraged again yeah. that the economy is improving and they're starting to look, and that's why we saw the e increase in the unemployment statistics. Okay, we come back. I want to talk to you about health care. Uh, New York State has broadened access to health care. You've got some concerns about it, so let's talk about it. So don't go anywhere. MTL will be back in about 90 seconds. Hurricane Sandy has brought unthinkable devastation to the city of Long Beach destroying homes, businesses, and our beloved beach and boardwalk. But our spirits have not been broken. That's why I'm asking for your help, so we can rebuild our treasured city by the sea. Please send your donations to Long Beach Relief Fund at City Hall, 1 West Chester Street in Long Beach, New York, or donate online at longbeachny.gov. Pronto of Long Island is a diverse community-based organization serving the areas of Bayshore, Brentwood, Central Isop, and neighboring communities of Hempstead to Massac Shirley. Pronto provides free food through his pantry and gently used clothing and household goods through his thrift shop and warehouse. Pronto also offers a multitude of other community services. For more information on volunteering, donations, or services, please call 631-231-8290. Life's funny. I never thought I'd end up at a shelter. But then again, neither did you. Life's funny. I'm afraid to open my eyes. I'm afraid yesterday was all a dream. And I'll wake up and s still be in the shelter. One, two, three. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders here with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. Uh, Controller Maragos, let's just wrap up on Sandy. You, you uh, are concerned about the fact that a lot of people could be entitled to a reduction in their assessments as a result of the damage. What can they do about that? Oh, absolutely. And when uh, they received earlier in January 
uh, their tentative tax assessment in the mail, they also received a form mm -hmm. uh, that I encourage everybody who has suffered hurricane damage to complete and get a, uh, a property tax reduction. Uh, I, I am also encouraging all of the homeowners across our county to file our, our grievance. Last year, approximately 25% filed grievances, and and uh, 90, I'm sorry, 85% of them approximately got a reduction, uh, almost at the expense of everybody else. So I, I'm encouraging 100% of our homeowners to, to file a, a grievance have the county take a second <coughs> look at their assessment mm -hmm. relative to their to their neighbors. And if people have and any questions, them. is this accessible on the web? Uh, can people get information? If, for example, if they've lost that form, or how do you go about processing the grievance so that uh, it can be considered? Uh, it's on, it's online. They can go online and file the form. We're also setting up a group within our office uh, uh, to take inquiries for, mm -hmm. uh, and assist uh, our homeowners. We will also be sending out a mailer to all of them, reminding them that uh, it's a good idea to, to file a grievance. Uh, there's advantage to doing so uh, and, and encourage 100% participation. Well, you know what's so interesting about this is that uh, the grievance procedure is a little bit technical, but it's not that difficult if you have the information in front of you. And there are these, uh, these, these firms that go out and say they'll do it and they'll take a percentage of the refund. Yes. Uh, but with a little bit of work and focus, most people could probably do this themselves so they don't have to be giving money away to anybody. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the information is... And you'll help them, too. And, Your and office we will, will help them. The controller's them. office will help them. We'll walk uh, them through that process. It's, it's very simple. Uh, we're there to help them. Uh, and there's a huge advantage uh, to them uh, filing a grievance. Early. And again, especially for those people south of Merrick Road, all of the people in the floodplain whose homes have been significantly damaged, we know... Uh, that uh, at least for the next couple of years, uh, they have their folks are going to have a lot of expenses, but those homes are not worth as right. much as they were yes. uh, prior to Hurricane Sandy, and, and, the, and the assessment should reflect that. Oh, ab absolutely, it's critical they do. In the, in the mailer that we will be sending mm -hmm. out, we're also going to alert people to be you know to be uh, a little careful with these uh, tax representative firms. Um, uh, uh, we're encouraging everybody to file, but we're also encouraging or alert. Uh, alerting people that if, if they use a tax firm to please make sure they understand how their, their fee is going to be calculated because there's been a lot of complaints in, in the past because some people right. actually see their taxes go up but all, it, it, it could get a bill from the tax firm and they wonder how did that happen. How did that happen? Okay, good point. Uh, and again, if people have any questions, they could just call your office, Absolutely. and you've got experts there who will help them. So let's let's talk about a report that you did do, which has to do with uh, the the uh, Medicaid system, which uh, the counties administer on behalf of the state of New York. Uh, over the last couple of year, couple of years, there's been a big expansion of eligibility. It's easier to get health care coverage uh, through Medicare uh, than it's ever been, and and more people are being covered. But you've got concerns about fraud. Oh, ab absolutely. Um, uh, and our report c c uh, kind of highlighted something that mm -hmm. uh, nobody had focused on, that here in Nassau County, we're spending $1.8 billion on Medicaid. Uh, our portion is, is about $300 million of that, so it's still significant. And, and overall, it, it's ha it has been growing at three, four times the rate of inflation. As you rightfully pointed out, uh, participation has been increasing. Uh, but at the same time, we, we have um, uh, Im improved our uh, fraud detection. Uh, we're looking at many more claims uh, mm -hmm. very closely to make sure that people are reporting their claims. Uh, they're not transferring a assets to, the, to their relatives. So we're, we're very, very um, uh, careful in, in that regard. And as a result, the amount of fraud has, mm -hmm. been, has been reduced. Now, the state legislature has taken steps uh, to address the fraud issue, but it's one of those things that uh, you have to just be vigilant. But I would think that with technology, uh, doing the type of analysis that you need to do where you see uh, cases where providers put in a ridiculous amount of, uh, of procedures um, for a given patient or, or patients, uh, that that type of fraud would pop up and, and be pretty obvious today as a result of technology and some of the It should work be, and we're not there. doing enough of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, we cannot do that at the county level because the providers submit right. their, their claims to, to the state, <clears throat> and we just get a state from the bill. 
what we, our, our part is to try to eliminate the fraud mm -hmm. uh, when people sign up. When they apply. When they apply. And, and we're very careful in, in that regard. The price that we've, we've paid is that some of our applications, are, uh, uh, as we've pointed out in the audit, mm -hmm. may take a little longer to, to process. But we think it's worthwhile to take that extra time and make sure that people are qualified to receive Medicaid. Now, when you go in and do an audit, in this case, the Department of Social Services, how does the department react to your...